What is going on, everybody? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. Today, we are talking about that game yesterday against the Chicago Bears. And I want to talk about it with you guys. Uh, you know, I, you know, I started this video earlier today where I said, All right, I'm going to start looking at the tape and I'm going to start doing the typical videos that I've done every week up to this point. I just don't have the energy for it today, but I did watch every single one of our snaps and I do want to just kind of talk it through because although the Raiders lost yesterday against the Bears, there are a lot of good moments that I saw for the Raiders. There are a lot of really, really, really positive things that I think you can definitely take. First and foremost, uh, Tyree Wilson looked very, very good yesterday. In fact, he was the highest graded player by the uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, he had a sack. He had a forced fumble. He had another play in which he had a quarterback. Hey, he almost brought the quarterback down for a second sack. And that's positive, right? That's, that's something you can continue to build on. Uh, the Raiders' offensive line looked good yesterday in, in pass protection. Now, they've continued to struggle in run blocking, but they did look good in, in pass protection. Thayer Monford looked pretty good. Uh, he started for the Raiders at right tackle. Um, generally speaking, you know, minus the right guard, the Raiders looked pretty good on the offensive offensive line. Um, and I think there's definitely positives to take with this with this game. You know, uh, let's just let's just start it right here. Uh, the Raiders lost yesterday's game because of. Uh, in my opinion, one big, big, big mistake by the Raiders head coach. Uh, that was coming into this game and saying, you know, this is our game plan, which is we're going to play conservative. We're going to try running the football. We're going to try to score points with the, a, a veteran quarterback. And the Bears, on the other hand, are a team coming in with a rookie quarterback. And we know we can take advantage of that on the defensive side. And that did not work. That game plan did not work out all for the Raiders. And I think that was a wrong approach to this game. In fact, when Josh McDaniels does get fired, this will be the the one knock I will always hold against him, which is his his game planning, his conservativeness at all times, his you know his thinking is that he has Bill Belichick on the other side. Get past that. We're not that. We don't have Bill Belichick on the other side. We're not forcing a rookie corner a quarterback into into these mistakes. In fact, not only do we not force Tyson Beijing into bad mistakes and turnovers. But on tape, Beijing pretty much whooped the Raiders' ass. Like, this guy was going through his reads. He had all day to throw the ball. He was getting the ball out. Very, very few pressures. When guys were covered, he was able to roll out of the pocket and pick up 15 yards here, 12 yards here. The guy looked very good. And here's the thing. I, I, I talked about this on Twitter about a day before the game. Tyson Beijing is the Bears' Aiden McConnell. The Raider fans have seen Aiden McConnell. We know Aiden McConnell is better. Than, than Brian Hoyer, although Josh McDaniels may not agree with that. McDaniels will tell you it's no longer preseason, and Hoyer gives you the better chance to win. We've seen Aiden McConnell. Tyson Bajant is the Aiden McConnell for the Chicago Bears, and he came out, and he showed us why he's the Aiden McConnell for the Bears. Now, he may not be the future of the Bears. I don't even think he's better than Justin Fields, to be honest, but I do think Tyson Bajant showed us one thing in yesterday's game, which is you know, the Raiders can't play this this style of, of offense and defense, and they can't play this style of football right now, which is play conservative, conservative on the offensive side and let the defense win the game. It's not going to work. That style will never work for the Las Vegas Raiders. For the Raiders to have success, they got to build that natural energy by scoring on the offensive side, getting the defense fired up, in the hopes that the defense can then force some turnovers possibly. Right. Another thing I don't agree with with the Las Vegas Raiders is on the defensive side, they had this approach that we're going to play zone coverage and that it'll somehow confuse this quarterback into maybe some uh, mental mistakes, some turnover worthy plays. That did not happen yesterday. Bajan did not at all panic. And to take it a step further, not only did the Raiders not pressure Bajan, they weren't able to force him into mental mistakes. The Raiders got ran over yesterday. And I think the Chicago Bears did a really, really good job. Making a key decision that I think Josh McDaniels and our coaching staff may not have asked, you know, maybe, maybe they overlooked it a little bit, which is they took their starting left guard in Tevin Jenkins and they paired him up with the, the, the rookie right tackle in Darnell Wright. And they put those two guys at right guard, right tackle. This was the first time that Tevin Jenkins played right guard this season. And between those two guys, Tevin Jenkins, keep in mind, is a top five guard in the NFL. He basically helped Darnell Wright shut down Max Crosby. Max Crosby really didn't have all that much of an impact yesterday. And I think the Raiders were really, well, you know, they're really hoping 
that Max Crosby would be able to ultimately have success and, and beat up on Darnell Wright, the rookie right tackle. And Wright really held it down. Uh, Max did have one sack yesterday for the Raiders, but I would argue that Max's best ability isn't even sacks. I think it's really just that disruption that he has, you know, the pressures, you know, beating a guy, forcing a quarterback off his spot. And he didn't do any of that last uh, last night. To me, all I saw from Max Rosby was, you know, two or three plays in which he got close, maybe around the edge. But outside of that, he really didn't do a whole lot. And at one point, the Max Crosby even moved over from lining up against the right tackle to the other side and line up against the left tackle. And if you guys watch Max Crosby's tape, you guys know he's not the same guy over on that side, right? Not that it makes a massive difference, but, you know, you can tell Max Crosby's not the same guy going up against the left tackle than he is going up against the right tackle. All right, Max Crosby is a natural left defensive end. He's, he lines up over the right tackle. And, and he likes to put his right hand in the ground, right? He, he likes that body positioning. He likes to attack from that side. Um, it makes a difference when you're a guy that uses your hands a lot, right? You get more used to being on one side versus the other. It's like playing right tackle versus left tackle as an offensive lineman. It makes a difference. And I would argue that the Bears making that one adjustment within their offensive line, putting Tevin Jenkins over that right guard, that kind of neutralized Max Crosby a little bit. And I think the Bills kind of attacked us the same exact way. And I almost think that the Raiders not having like a second defensive lineman or disruptive player on the defensive front, the front seven specifically, I, I think it's it's really hindering us at, at certain points. Uh, putting Tevin Jenkins next to Darnell Wright made a lot of sense for the Bears. And ultimately, they were able to uh, not 100 percent, but, you know, make it so that the rookie quarterback did not get pressured by Max Crosby on top of that. You know, when it came to the run game, the right guard, right tackle did a lot of really, really good things together. They're double teaming on the D tackle. They're climbing to the next level, opening up, opening up massive lanes. And the Raiders just couldn't stop it. Uh, the run game, we couldn't stop. We couldn't stop them in, in, in the pass game. The quarterback was able to have enough time that, you know, zone coverage always kind of breaks down towards the end of a play. And if you're not able to get to the quarterback, it's kind of what you get, right? And I felt like the Raiders game plan just coming in wasn't good enough. Defense wasn't good enough. Offense definitely was not good enough. Uh, I felt like Josh McDaniels made a massive mistake as well with just his, his mindset coming into this game, being conservative. It just doesn't work. I think we're at the point where if you're overly aggressive on the offensive side, you're more likely to have success because, you know, half of the NFL games are going to come down to, to their 50 50 games, right? And if you're more aggressive, you're more willing to win that game. You're willing to take it. You're going to have success. You're going to win more games. And and unfortunately for the Raiders, Josh McDaniels doesn't really do that. He's he's too conservative. And uh, I think that's kind of been the story of Josh McDaniels, right, is that he's a little too conservative. But also another thing that kind of stuck out to me yesterday watching this Raiders team was that uh, Brian Hoyer is a very, very bad quarterback, right? Uh, I talked to you guys coming into this game that the past – Two games prior to this game, right, which was the uh, the Packers game as well as the, uh, the the Patriots game, right, the two games where Jimmy Garoppolo actually played in, the Raiders' offense actually looked good. Right? We actually moved the football. We're actually getting into the red zone, and the red zone issues were still there. But we were able to actually do certain things, and that did not happen yesterday against the Bears. We scored six points against the Bears. Right, I would argue we had like three good drives yesterday in all of yesterday's game, minus until Aiden McConnell came into the game. And I felt like that right there was also a big issue for the Raiders. We went with the wrong quarterback, right? We should have went with Aiden O'Connell. Um, I'm not saying Aiden O'Connell, even at this point, is better than Jimmy Garoppolo. To be honest, Jimmy Garoppolo is the Raiders' best quarterback. Um, and the unfortunate part is, is that Josh McDaniels thought that, hey, Jimmy G will be healthy enough to, to finish a game, and he hasn't done that, right? And that is now why everybody is calling for Josh McDaniels to be fired. Uh, he made the wrong pick at quarterback, and... Uh, you know, it's unfortunate for him because, uh, let's be honest, there's not really a big difference between John Gruden's first two years and Josh McDaniels. In fact, McDaniels is on pace to have more winning games than, than John Gruden in Gruden's first two years than, than McDaniels' first two years. Josh McDaniels is on pace to be better, which is kind of crazy to think. And here we are at the point where everybody wants Josh McDaniels kind of to be fired. And to be honest, it's kind of brought Raider Nation together almost. Right, ever since the Derek Carr thing happened, where people are actually coming together, wanting to get rid of Josh McDaniels. Now, I'm going to end the video here. Yeah, I'm going to push back against that a little bit. 
Not that I don't think Josh McDaniels deserves to be fired and not be here. In, in fact, I'd make the argument that, you know, if, if John Harbaugh is available, if Mike McDaniel has, you know, some 28 year old guy in his building that is this, this massive creator of plays and he's the next best head coach, go get that guy. Right. I'm not saying not to do that, but I'm saying right now what the Raiders need is they need consistency at the top. They need a guy that could actually help the Raiders win games. And I do think from an offensive approach, Josh McDaniels with Jimmy Garoppolo does give the Raiders the best chance to, to win. You know, it's not guaranteed that Devontae Adams in a week and a half is going to say, hey, I, you know, it's all good. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm good to be a Raider for, forever. It's not guaranteed. I know the report from Adam Schefter this week was just that Devontae Adams not, is not going to request a trade or whatever. But it is not guaranteed that the Raiders won't trade Devontae Adams. If he came out and said, hey, I'm not. You know, I'm not playing for a losing team. You guys just fire your head coach. I'm not playing for a losing team. It's not guaranteed that when Colton Miller gets his next contract, he doesn't say, I am good. I'm not playing for the Raiders. I'd rather go play for a winning organization like the Cowboys, a winning organization like the Eagles, a winning organization, you know, like the Chiefs or whatever it may be, right? Whatever team is having success and has shown that they can actually build good rosters and they actually have a good coaching staff. And the Cowboys may have been a wrong team to kind of use, but you guys get my point, right? There's no guarantee that Raiders players are going to continue to say, I'll stay here, even though you guys have shown the inconsistencies of firing your head coach or, or, you know, getting rid of them, forcing them to resign or whatever it is. It's not guaranteed that players are going to stick around. And it's not, it's also not guaranteed that that player is going to sign when that, when that contract, you know, comes up free agency, uh, re-signing your rookie players is not guaranteed that these guys stick around. Right. There's a, a, a long a rumor out there that Arden Key did not want to re-sign with the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, Arden Key wanted nothing to do with this coaching staff. At that time, it was John Gruden, obviously. And Arden Key's a pretty good player. He, he splashed multiple times. He's actually a pretty good player today in the NFL. And there's been a handful of other guys that have said, I don't want to play for that organization. And the Raiders got to turn it around at some point. Uh, the Raiders got to have a little bit of success. And I think at the moment, the way to have that is Josh McDaniels, Jimmy Garoppolo have to be the two guys for the Raiders, and they got to come together and get it done. You know, I didn't hate Josh McDaniels, uh, you know, attack early on in the game of getting Devontae Adams the ball, forcing it to him. And I think ultimately on pretty much all of our drives, it came down to plays in which, you know, McDaniels called the play for Michael Mayer running right down the middle of the field. And he's wide open, and Reinhardt just didn't have the ability to get it to, to Michael Mayer. Uh, we had guys getting open in the backfield, possibly on one play, and then Brian Hoyer throws it to him on the wrong play, right? To me, Brian Hoyer is just not a good quarterback, and I think Josh McDaniels maybe understands that at this point as well. I think Jimmy Garoppolo could help the Raiders win more games, and I don't even know if, if, if Raider fans want the Raiders to win more games, but after watching the tape of the Bears game yesterday, there's improvements that have been made. You can tell the offensive line is a little bit better. You can even tell that the Bears really didn't respect our pass game. They're, they're coming in to stop the run, and that kind of makes sense. And that actually hasn't happened since the Bills game. That was the last time that a team really wanted to only stop the run of the Raiders and basically let them pass the football. All right? The Bills are the last team that kind of allowed us to do that. It's going to be interesting how the Raiders go forward because I felt like there were some good players on tape. Tyree Wilson, of course, had a pretty good game. Uh, I felt like Colton Miller, Dylan Parham looked pretty good. Uh, Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers obviously has continued to step up. Michael Mayer wasn't targeted as much, but I think that's more of a quarterback issue because he was open. A number of plays he was open, and the quarterback just didn't throw him the football. And I think at some point, you know, if a quarterback's not good enough, Josh McDaniels can only do so much. All right, so we'll see what ends up happening. I do think that the Raiders should continue to try to win football games. Tanking is not the way to go, right? So let me know what you guys think. Would you guys rather the Raiders tank? Would you guys rather have the Raiders win? Let me know in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.